Welcome to Star Wars Characters Explained. How much do you know about the infamous Jedi cat girl Juhani? Despite my personal distaste for the character, Juhani is one of the most tragic backstories of any KOTOR companion, so let's discover together the complete story of Juhani. Before we start, if you go on to enjoy this video, know that there's a lot more coming, so perhaps consider subscribing and joining me for more in-depth stories like this one. Juhani was born on the planet Cathar in 3973 BBY, to two loving parents who wanted nothing but the best for their child. However, in the same year of her birth, the Mandalorians began to aggressively attack and destabilise planets in the Outer Rim. And in an act of vengeance against the Cathar people who fought alongside the Republic several decades earlier in the Exarchoon War, the Mandalorians swiftly engulfed the planet in fire and blood and committed mass genocide against the Cathar people who were unable to fight back. Juhani was only several months old as her planet burned. However, her parents had narrowly managed to escape the destruction of Cathar and fled to the planet Taris as refugees. However, being both a refugee and a non-human ensured that Juhani's life would not be one of peace or respect, but one of constant struggle to survive and speciesism. Although young, Juhani grew to hate the planet, considering it to be a rat hole, however she understood that her life could have been much worse and considered Taris her home regardless. But at the age of 10, her struggle would only get worse as a Twi'lek man known as Zor, who fought with the Mandalorians at the genocide of Cathar, discovered Juhani and her family and provoked her father into a fight who was murdered as a result. The bond between two Cathar was an extremely powerful thing, and the death of her partner had caused Juhani's mother to completely lose hope and the light within her soul began to die. Despite working tirelessly to support herself and Juhani in a cantina, debts began to rack up and she began to borrow money from the crime syndicate known as The Exchange. Because of their limited income, most food that they managed to get was given to Juhani and one day her mother simply couldn't take it anymore and she collapsed and died from exhaustion in the cantina where she worked. The Exchange then capitalised on this, taking Juhani in as a slave to pay back the debts that her mother owed and in the slums of Taris, Juhani had hit the lowest point in her life. She was bound like an animal and treated like dirt. However, by this time, the Mandalorian Wars were raging across the galaxy, and Taris was conquered and controlled by the Mandalorians. Juhani and her time on Taris had heard tales of the Jedi, idolising them for everything they stood for in an unjust world, and eventually the Republic, led by the Jedi Knight Revan, launched a liberation attempt on Taris to free it from the clutches of the Mandalorians. Revan himself led a group of Jedi into the Undercity to free the slaves, driving the exchange away and giving hope to those who were suffering under their rule. Juhani herself was one of these very slaves that Revan saved, and Revan and his Jedi compatriots convinced the slaves to try and better their lives and even convinced some that the Jedi Order could potentially be the answer. Juhani was utterly enthralled by Revan, his words and his heroism, and vowed to become a Jedi like her idol. Knowing that there was some forced sensitivity within her blood, Juhani gathered as much money as she could and boarded the first freighter to Dantooine and was taken in by the Jedi Master Quatra as her Padawan. But becoming a Jedi was more difficult than she had thought. The aggression within her Cathar blood made it difficult for her to control her emotions and as such she began to feel that her dream of becoming a Jedi was futile. In the early years of being in the Enclave, she grew close to another Padawan called Dak Vesa who arrived at the Enclave at the same time as her. Dak also shared doubts about the Jedi and his place within the Order, and as such, the two confided in each other. However, Dak eventually became completely disillusioned and began to fall in love with Juhani. He eventually confessed his feelings and begged Juhani to leave the Enclave with him. However, Juhani didn't feel the same way, and Dak left heartbroken and angry. Juhani spent the next several years training under Quatra and befriended another Jedi known as Belea, the two became extremely close, and the two women would often spend their time and nights together. The full extent of this relationship caused concern to the Jedi Order, believing it to be a weakness between the two, and they also feared the possibility that their relationship was more than a friendship, a path which could lead to the dark side. As time passed, Juhani completed her training, and Quatra knew that she had nothing left to teach her. Her final test would be teaching Juhani her own limits, as both a Cathar and a Jedi. Quatra created a false scenario for Juhani, and as the two got into an extremely heated argument, 
This heated argument turned into violence, and Juhani in a fit of rage attacked her master and seemingly killed her. Once Juhani had came to the realisation of what she had done, she felt nothing but despair and gave into the dark side of the Force. She then escaped the Jedi Enclave and hid in an ancient meditation grove nearby, and her pain began to taint the surrounding area, causing the animals and beasts to become aggressive and affected by the dark side of the Force. Juhani spent some time alone in this grove, truly believing that she was beyond saving, even going as far as to adopt a new red lightsaber to convince herself. However, a young Jedi Padawan arrived at the grove to redeem her and bring her back to the Order, to which Juhani refused. She instead froze the Jedi's companions and ignited her lightsaber, engaging in a vicious duel to which she was easily defeated. Shocked that even the power of the dark side was unable to beat this young Jedi, Juhani begged to be killed. However, the Jedi man refused, showing Juhani the error of her ways, and it was in this moment that she realised what her master was trying to teach her. Thanks to this Jedi's intervention, Juhani returned to the council and begged for forgiveness, but she was shocked but understanding after she learned that Quatra had feigned her death, and she had already left Dantooine to begin training other students, fully believing in Juhani and that she would overcome the test. Juhani's training was now complete, and she was given the title of Jedi Knight along with the Jedi who saved her life in the Grove, and although she wore the scars of the dark side, the lessons would be invaluable to her. She asked the Jedi Council if she could accompany the Jedi man that saved her on his mission to discover the star maps dotted around the galaxy. She believed her experience with falling to the dark side could be invaluable to those that she travelled with, and as such the Jedi agreed and let Juhani leave. However, unbeknownst to Juhani was the true identity of the man she travelled with. It was Revan, her hero, her idol, the man who had saved her from the slums of Taris and given her the freedom that she so desperately needed. But to most of the galaxy, Revan had become a Sith Lord and was presumed dead. His mind, however, was rewritten by the Jedi Order and believed himself a nobody, a mere soldier of the Republic. Juhani travelled with the man and his companions, growing relatively close to them over time and she eventually opened up to them about her life. But despite her training, Juhani would constantly feel the lure of the dark side. And when they arrived on the planet Manan in search of one of their maps, they bumped into an old Twi'lek man who abused Juhani simply because she was one of the Cathar. The more they spoke with this speciesist man, the more was eventually revealed. It was Zor, the man who had killed her father and tried to buy her as a slave on Taris all those years ago. Zor tried to convince Revan into selling her to him, but the former Sith Lord stood by his ally, whose anger was slowly bubbling to the surface. Zor then ran away in fear of Juhani, and instead returned later with a handful of goons to fight her. But they were no match for the two Jedi who easily bested them in battle. Zor, who was slowly dying to his wounds, tried to break Juhani's will. However, due to her friendship with Revan and his support, she was able to resist the temptation and stay true to her training and the lessons of her master. The two Jedi then watched as Zor died to his wounds, angered that he couldn't make the young Jedi Cathar act like the beast that he saw her as. At one point on their travels, the group was then captured by Saul Carath and the Sith Armada. However, with the help of Juhani and the rest of the crew, they were able to escape, but not before Revan's true identity as the Dark Lord of the Sith was revealed by Darth Malak. When Juhani discovered the truth, she was bewildered. The man she had looked up to for all those years had always been in front of her. He had saved her, and she couldn't truly believe how he could turn to the dark side, but she knew that if she could be saved, anyone could, vowing to support him on his quest after everything that he had done for her. As they searched for the last star map on the planet Korriban, they bumped into Juhani's old friend Dak Vesa. Dak was seemingly unsettled and after speaking to Juhani and Revan decided to leave the Sith Academy. However, Dak's feelings for Juhani still existed, and after they met for a second time in the cantina in Dreshdai, he promised not to reveal Revan's identity, but he stated that he needed to stay far away from Juhani too. After they found the last star map on Korriban, they found the dreaded Starforge in the unknown regions. But as they travelled, a disruptor field on the nearby planet of Lehon forced the Ebon Hawk to crash land, and as they searched for parts to fix the ship, they came across the ancient Rakatan people who allowed them to enter a great temple which harboured the disruptor field. Revan left alone, however Juhani and Jo Lee had a premonition that warned them that something dreadful may happen within the temple, and because of this they both caught up to the redeemed Jedi 
accompanying him within the temple, giving him the same support that he had given them. This premonition turned out to be correct, as the temple was littered with Dark Jedi and the three battled their way to the summit, where they were finally confronted by Bastila Shan, Revan's lover and Juhani's friend, who had been captured previously by Darth Malak on the Leviathan and was tortured and twisted into falling to the dark side. The four battled each other on top of the temple, and the three Jedi Knights overcame Bastila despite her newfound strength, who instead then tried to coerce Revan into joining her as Lord of the Sith. But with Juhani and Jo Lee by his side, he didn't give in to Bastila's temptation. And it was in this moment that Juhani had repaid the favour and saved the man that once saved her on Taris, but not from slavers, but from himself and the one he loved. The Republic and the companions of the Ebon Hawk then attacked the Starforge and brought an end to the Jedi Civil War after Revan killed Malak and destroyed the Starforge for good. Juhani, along with Revan and his companions, were then honoured by the Republic as heroes during a celebration, and Juhani was also relieved after Bastila was redeemed by Revan due to the bond and love that the two shared. After the Jedi Civil War ended, Juhani returned to the Jedi Order, helping it rebuild after its destruction at the hands of Darth Malak and Darth Revan. However, this peace would not last long, as four years later, the Jedi Order was systematically destroyed by a hidden threat in the dark. While it is not truly known, it is likely that Juhani shared the same fate as the Jedi Order that she served, and died on the planet Qatar after Darth Nihilus consumed what remained of the Jedi and the Miralukan people. However, Juhani's heroism was never forgotten, and a hollow statue of her alongside Revan and his companions was erected in the Leisure Garden on Corellia, as a testament for everything she had done for both the Jedi Order and the Republic. I know it's probably surprising to some of you that I covered Juhani, but I wanted to get the character out of the way because I do intend to cover most of the Old Republic companions as we move forward in the future, and I do hope you enjoyed her story in its fullest. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe if you want to see more, and tell me in the comments what do you think of Juhani. If you're interested, come and follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and perhaps consider taking a look at Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. And please, come and join my Discord server, I'd love to have you there. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.